G'day guys, welcome back. Last pour before I go away. So, I am going to do another flip cup for you with my glue and water mix. This one here, 65% glue, it's just a white craft glue and 35% water, it's just tap water, nothing special. And um, I've noticed when you first start mixing your paints with the glue water mix, it seems really, really thick. But then as you mix it, it becomes lovely and creamy and smooth. Uh, let me see if I can show you the consistency. I'll pick a lighter colour. I've got a few air bubbles in there because I've just mixed it, so hopefully it'll be all right. So it leaves quite a mound, a little wriggle on top, a mound on a mound. And if I lift my stick up, that took about eight seconds before it started to break. When you do that and count, it took about eight seconds and then the, the stream broke. So I, I make them all the same, it all take about eight seconds to break. If your stream's breaking at about five seconds, then it's too thick. Or if it keeps going and going and going until about 12 seconds and then it breaks, it's too thin. All right, I'm going to lay my cups and then I'll tell you about the colours I'm using. I'm going all sort of turquoises and, and reds. This is kind of like my Phoenix Rising pour that I did, the Phoenix being the colours. Um, so I really like those colours, so I'm going to see how I go with a flip cup in, the, in those colours. It may not work, it may be terrible, it may be really muddy, but I'm going to have a go. So, I have got 50-50 uh, of my glue and water pouring medium to paint. So in each cup I've got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint. These two warm colours, I did have to add a little bit of extra water. I found that they were just a bit too thick. So 100 grams of paint in each, and I'm going to use my treadmill silicone, 100% silicone. I don't think it matter what, matters what brand you use, just get 100% silicone. Right, let's put, I want lots of cells this time, so let's go five drops in each cup. And I'm going to put it in the white as well. And my navy blue down here on the end is going to act as my black, so I won't put any in that it's a nice dark color hopefully it's a heavy density color and it'll drop to the background and allow these lighter colors with the oil to come up I'm going to give it a good stir probably around five times ish because I don't want big blobs of silicone oil left in there I want um, I want like lots of little cells that I can stretch. I find if you leave big blobs of silicone in there, they kind of stretch out. Uh, one big blob would stretch out and cause a, a caterpillar maybe, so I'm not going to do that. Right, let's start layering. So I've gone navy, light turquoise, dark turquoise, and I'm separating my cools from my warms with the white. And then we've got, um, it's kind of a light orange and a, and a dark orangey red colour, but I'll tell you about the colours shortly. Let's layer. So I'm going to do two layers of each colour in my cup. I have sprayed my cups with silicone oil, a uh, silicone spray, that one there, three in one, and I've just wiped out the excess with a bit of paper towel just to help the paint release. And this is the light turquoise. Well, lighter turquoise, I guess, in comparison to this one. This is quite a, a dark greeny blue, sort of an ocean colour. So as I said, I'm going to put my cool colours in first and separate them with the white. Uh, white seems a little bit on the thick side. Let me add a bit of water. They can thicken up as they're sitting here. I find white and the warm colours do tend to thicken up a bit. That's better. It's pouring better. I can just go by the feel of it. 
And that just comes to with experience as to how thick your paint is. There we go. So yes, as I said, last day today. And I was sitting there watching TV and answering questions on Facebook and I thought, what am I going to do today? I've got my bedding in the wash, so that's done. Um, I need to give the house a quick vacuum, so I'll do that shortly. Oops, I've got a bit more lady left in there. Let's use a bit more. Um, and then pretty much packed. Haven't got a lot more packing to do. And I thought I've probably got time to do a little pour. So I wanted to try these colours out in a flip cup and see how they went because the Phoenix one was just amazing. I love those colours. And you guys seem to like those colours too. And based on that pour, I do want to try something else as well, which I'll tell you about when I come back because I'll, I'll do it then. I had an idea. You know how I tipped half of the paint off? <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a little idea of what I can do to maybe keep some of that paint that I lost. Um, and what else do I need to do today? Um, my daughter's home. She's finished uni, so she's on holiday, so she'll be here. Um, my other daughter, Christy, she's coming up to stay for a week to dog sit for me. So she'll be here on Friday. Today is Tuesday. I go tomorrow, Wednesday. And Christy will be coming up on Friday to dog sit for me. And... Uh, She's going to use my room because I've got a big king size bed in there. So there's heaps of room for me and all my dogs. And there's a little ladder that goes from the, the floor up to the bed so that the little doggies can get up because they're only little. Uh, so yeah, she's going to be using my room and my ensuite. And there's a TV in there, so she should be comfy, hopefully. And she's bringing her dog. She's got a cavoodle and she's bringing her bird which is a uh, sun conya. So we've always been a household of animals. I used to be in the wildlife volunteers for many years, uh, looking after injured and orphaned wildlife. I guess it's just my nature. I'm a nurse, so maybe it's just my nature, having to care for creatures, all creatures, great and small. I don't know. So, yeah, she's bringing those. And her bird can go out in the aviary with my king parrot. I think my kookaburras, my wild kookaburras that come every morning. You might have seen my kookaburras or heard them during some of my paws. I'm not sure. Every year they have a baby. And I think they've got a baby in the nest because they come and get their raw meat every morning and every evening. And instead of eating it straight away, they put it in their beak and they go... And they carry on like a, as kookaburras do, and they have this huge call. And I think that one must be calling the other one. Say, so come and get some food. And then they fly off with the food in their beak. And then a few minutes later, they come back and get some more. And then they fly off with that. And they do this a few times. And then they'll actually take some food and, and swallow it and, and eat it for themselves. So I'm thinking. In another month or so, they'll probably bring their new baby home to visit. And they've done this, we've only been in this house for three years, they've done this for the last two years, brought a new baby. So I'm expecting a new baby soon. And then last season's baby, they tell him to leave the nest, so to speak. And he goes off and finds himself a mate and then the new baby stays for a year. And the cycle begins all over again. So that's quite interesting. I enjoy it because I'm, you know, obviously a wildlife animal lover. So I enjoy seeing them, the new babies every year. All right, let's set those sit for a minute. And I'll tell you about my paints. So we have all of the global impastos, turquoise, and 
This is the dark greeny blue one. It's called Deep Space. And then we have my favourite navy. Actually, no, this one's Deep Space. This one's Deep Sea. I'm getting them wrong. Deep Sea, Deep Space. And then good old white. And then we have warm red and warm yellow. So it's kind of like a, an orangey and a reddish tone. So that's them there. Okay, now I can see across here that the paint's already left the surface. Well, it's a surface here, but it's the bottom of the cup. You can see where the silicone oil has been sprayed. So I know that my paint is sitting about here. I can see it. Oh, it's got cells on top. Yay! Looks really pretty. So I know that it's ready to go. So I am going to, what am I going to do? I've had better results where I drag too much and leave too much paint in the cup. So I kind of just flip it and let it fall out. I found that works best for me. Just like that, just let it fall out. Oh, look at those cells. Okay, that's pretty much got all of the paint out. Tiny little bit left if I do need it for my corners, but as you see, I've got the corners covered, the paint that's left in the cup, even though it's just a little bit, it's already been a bit muddy because it's been tipped a couple of times. So I don't really want to use it. Okay. Give that a minute. It's looking good so far. I've got some beautiful multicolored cells that are popping up. Yay. All right, um, now, which torch will I use? I'll go with the little guy again because it's just a little surface. And I don't want pop. Oh, look at that. I went too close there. Lots and lots of cells. I was trying to pop that bubble. And because, as I said, I've only just made this paint up, it's got a lot of bubbles in it. I think I better stop there. <laughs> look at that. It's got a lot of bubbles in it. Um, and then when I torch, the bubbles pop and they create cells as well. So uh, it's another reason to leave your paint uh, and let those bubbles subside before you pour. Because where I, I got close there, popping bubbles, whoa, cells popped up. So I think I'll, I know there's a little bit of space there with no cells, but let's see. I can always torch later on. We don't need to get carried away and torch too much now, do we? Now, I need a stick. So they're only little cells at the moment. If you've poured like this and your cells are really quite big straight away, that's an indication that your mix is too thin. You need to have small cells and then you need to tilt to stretch those cells out. If you start with your cells way too big, you tilt and then they'll stretch way too much and they'll, they'll go all misshapen. So. That's a good little guide to um, just see whether or not your paint is too thick or not, or too thin or not, I should say. All right, let's get to tilting. You know, I like these orange bits, so I'm going to do them last. Let's go the other way. It's so funny, the two cups that I tipped that way have got more orange in them, and the one I did that way has got more blue at the top. It's very strange how that happens. Alright, let's see if we can, I don't mind losing some of this orange up here, but let's try and keep most of the paint on the surface. This is my 12 by 16 inch, 30 by 40 centimetre card that I tend to use for my little experiments. It's a nice size. Okay, let's go for this side over here. I think I'm going to have to see how this is bigger, this is bigger, and that's small. I'm going to have to actually pop my hand underneath and just open that up a bit. And you can do it with a card, you can do it with a canvas, pop your hand underneath. Otherwise, this paint goes into the middle there and um, the center gets all sort of concertined, 
squished and your cells don't grow. So pop your hand underneath if it's a card, if it's a canvas. Obviously you can't do it if it's a board, but if it's a canvas, you certainly can take advantage of that and stretch the center out. Just trying to get that orange to go down just a little bit more, but I don't want to stretch too much out of what's going on here, this gorgeousness. Oh wow, loving those colours. Take the weight of the paint back a bit so I can clean off here. Actually, I'll move that, squish the paint through those holes, give it a bit of a, a wipe, put it back again. I can see where the edge is. Right. Isn't orange and turquoise amazing together? Just gorgeous. Right, now I need to go that way and that way and down and I need to open this bit up here where it's got a bit squished. So I think I'll just do that first. Pop my hand under here in the middle. Oops, I don't want to lose too much off that other corner. That's enough. And this bit of bit messy looking there that um, was from the extra cup that poured out I may tilt that off still to lose all my orange from there mm, what can I put on here I need to put a little bit more paint on here just to help that paint flow over and I'll torch it bring some cells up in there I'll most likely tilt all that off anyway I just needed the weight of it to help the rest of the paint flow There it goes and come back. Woohoo! Loving that. Give that a bit of a, a clean off. down the sand have been stretched a little bit so let's see if I can take some of the weight down and get them to sort of stretch back into shape squish them a little bit I've been using that word a lot today haven't I squish and I'd like to get some of this to come down but I don't think I can really that will moving that line no I don't think I can what about if I just lift this corner no <laughs> I wish I didn't have all that in the middle and then I could bring some of this down but I can't I'm just trying to straighten up this line a little bit not working all that well I can do that again and open this up a little bit this middle section up a bit okay I think that's it I'll leave it like that gorgeous wow love those colors my goodness I've been really happy with this glue and water mix that I've been developing really happy with it now I'm not going to torch again I know there's some blank areas here through there um, but that's okay it's nice to have a little bit of contrast with some plain paint against all that busyness of, of the cells so 
Alrighty, I'm just going to fix up my corners. Tiny little bit of blue here. Mm, yep, yeah, that tiny little bit there. I think that's enough. Someone's here. I don't need a doorbell, that's for sure. As soon as someone gets here, the dogs bark. Okay, guys, wow, look at that. Happy with that? Do you like that? I'm going to have to do this on a really big one, aren't I? Actually, no, it's, <laughs> it's pretty similar to the one that I did the other day. You know my, um, what did I call it? Bright and Beautiful? It's drying under the big food net. Let me go and get it for you and I'll show you. I didn't realise I'd already done these colours. Let me just wipe up my table here so I don't get paint on it. Oh, it's dirty hands. Um, so, I'll take you in for a close up. No, I won't. I'll move it out of the way. Just move it for one minute and then I'll show you bright and beautiful under my big net. This is my big food net. It's huge, isn't it? Oh, I didn't put it in my painting. No, I didn't. Phew. Oh, it's stuck. Push pins were stuck to the, the bottom. There it is there. It's very similar, isn't it? I didn't realise I'd done the same colours again. I can put it down. There we go. So it's almost almost dry. Well, it's dry on the edges. The middle section is still quite wet. But uh, yeah, it's looking looking really pretty, isn't it? And then there's that one. Look at that. I didn't realise they were so similar. Silly me. Here am I thinking I'm doing a different combination. Although, in saying that, this one had a lot more blue in it. It had the turquoise, it had the bright blue. So, yeah, it's got more blue in it. The other one is just um, more turquoise, but same colours. Oh, I didn't realise that. That's okay. They'll match nicely together, won't they? I'm going to pop it back under here. Just put it on the floor. My couple of pedal pads, doggy pedal pads, and then I'm going to cover it with my huge mosquito or food net. And that's what I do, and it's going to sit under there. It takes about five days to dry when the paint is this thick and there's that much paint on the surface. It takes that long to dry. All right, let's take you in for a close up. I'm going to turn it around. I think the other side's better. Yep, yeah, that'll be the top. All right. So Phoenix colours, reds, yellows, turquoise, pretty, pretty colours. All right, hope you enjoyed that video. Have a go at these colours. Have a go at my glue and water mix. Oops. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this. That'll do. Keep jumping around, don't I? Keeps jumping around. Um, yeah, so. Hope you like that. I do like it with more turquoise. It's still got a little bit of blue in it, obviously, where the navy is. And you can really see there's a big um, section of navy on the left there, near the orange. And it's actually got an orange ring around it, which is really pretty. The navy cells with the orange rings around them. Just beautiful. Not too much mud. Orange and the turquoise are going a little bit muddy, but it's not too bad. And you're going to get that when you're mixing paints together. But obviously the thinner your paint mix, the more mud you're going to get. So make sure you've got a nice little mound on top, as I showed you. All right, that's it for me. Bon voyage. I will see you when I return from my cruise, but I have scheduled... 10 videos to upload for you over the next 10 days so hopefully you won't miss me too much um, I probably won't be able to answer all your questions though while I'm away so 
I'm sorry about that and um, I'll catch you when I come back. Bye for now.